You know, it's interesting when you really think of how much time and energy and effort has gone into the theist-atheist debate here on YouTube and how much people are haggling still about is there a God? Is there not a God? Do you have a sufficient proof? Do the atheists need to prove that there isn't a God? All of this kind of stuff. And it seems like, wouldn't it be a better uh, you know, way to spend the time, the energy, and the effort for us to really haggle over the afterlife stuff? I think the afterlife stuff, at least there we can begin a serious discussion about what do we do with death and how do we accept death and what does death mean for both the individual and the society and I guess for the meaning of life. I, I still hear some people out there who espouse some kind of atheism but still believe I think in something like a trans-empirical soul or some I don't know, it was odd. I've heard odd discussions in the last uh, several weeks. And I think part of the concern is that when the discussion is about is there a God or is there not a God, there is an odd sandbagging on either side where people make it seem as if you know, they, they know what they mean by God or they accuse other people of that's what they mean. You know, they have some criticism for a, a position and then they attribute that to another person. I think it is really hard uh, to get at, you know, what would be an intelligible concept of the divine. Okay, there I think, you know, you could talk at length. Uh, it, it seems like as soon as you bring it up, it, it people are critical of it. And I understand th there is so much dogma that gets aligned with it. But when people start to say, well, people are killing themselves because of God, well, no, they're killing themselves because they have a belief in the afterlife. See, I think too many people in the argument about why they don't believe in God, it's really their statement is, I don't believe in anything like the afterlife. And now I'm hearing other people who are kind of trying to salvage the afterlife stuff amidst a, what they're taking to be some kind of complex scientific naturalism. I think the way that I would want to issue a, a, a throwdown here on, on YouTube for people to, to engage or to consider engaging is which is more uh, important for people to begin the discussion? Is it that there is or is not divine ground of being, whatever that would mean, or that there is or is not life after this one for an individual? That when you're dead, you're dead that you are an organism who it seems like the universe began with your birth because you don't know where you were before you were born because you weren't yet and when you're dead you will no longer be and it's you know the one thing you'll never have to worry about is what things are for you when you're dead you you won't be there right it'll be like I'm dying I'm dying you won't ever get to I'm dead if you get to I'm dead you're not yet I think Part of the concern is that I think it is easy to sandbag people and to say that it's religiosity or it's belief in the divine which makes people do evil things. But I wonder how much of the evil things come from a belief in the afterlife, a belief in an immortal soul, a belief in a world other than this one. So yeah, I, I don't think that the claim that the me who digests my food, the, the me who grows my hair, the me who, uh, I guess, metabolizes food, all of those biological processes, which I kind of want to say aren't really me, but just are the world doing whatever it is. If I call that a kind of divine miracle in its own right and a mystery beyond all thought, I think some people will say, okay, but if I want to make no purchase beyond that, if I don't want to say, you know, there's no judgment, no, no um, universal uh, knower outside and beyond who I could stand 
I guess, as a judgment before or, you know, guilty before or something like this. If I want to say there's no afterlife, if I want to say there's no divine intervention, there's no virgin birth, there's no, I don't know, uh, there, there's none of the, what I'd call, windy boobs of fairy dust. But I think if I still want to say, on the other hand, that there is a kind of divine mystery. And this divine mystery is the fact that nature evolved the capacity to liberate itself into this daring freedom, this freedom known as conscience, as the capacity to make promises and open to others in their otherness, to genuinely encounter the other, to not just reduce the world to an object known by me. I mean, I think other organisms, they encounter the world, but I don't know if they ever really encounter others in their otherness. I'm not sure. I think some higher primates maybe. You know, can we see a kind of a divinity, and by that I mean a miraculousness to everyday existence. It's funny, you know, look at Viktor Frankl's stuff. I had a friend recently recommend Man's Search for Meaning, and I've been recently, you know, looking at a little bit of it. And to, to look at the horrific conditions in concentration camps, and then to see that people were still able to find meaning, and people were able to to struggle against unbelievable odds, to find, I guess, heroic ways to band together and to find the, the concerns and the love of other people, to be enough reason to live and to face ongoing horrors. I mean, it's really pretty fascinating. I think that from my own perspective, so much of the YouTube discussion would be better off if we would learn to talk about how do we, with courage, face our death and face our collective lot of dying together, and from there, come to terms with how life and death are a unity, come to terms with people's right to die with dignity. Uh, I think to really open, I think part of the reason that people don't feel the gift character of life is that they're holding themselves hostage because they think it's some sort of, I don't know, debt or obligation. They, they don't see the, I don't know, the, I guess the robust, I don't know, I, I guess part of it is, it is hard to say. It's, it's not, to say that it's just a gift isn't to say that all that life is a gift. It means to think of everything that you ever thought of that was great. Think of everything that you ever ha had that was wonderful and just a joy to receive and something that was really exciting. That was part of life. Yes, it includes all the horror. It includes the Holocaust. It includes the genocides that are going on right now in Africa. It includes the unbelievable indifference to the social inequality all around us. I think, though, that there is still something divine about the mystery, and we need the courage to band together to see ourselves as a community of the dying and to ask what are the ways to give heroic meaning to people while minimizing the costs? How do we do that? How can we help people have a right to meaning? Like I see all these people complaining about this new health care bill, or not, not the health care bill, but the, the bill for uh, unemployment. And as if, you know, R Rush Limbaugh, he's out there saying, oh yeah, people are going to get Cadillacs on this. I don't think anyone wants to be unemployed. I think people want meaningful work. I think people want to feel like there's something in the world that they're contributing to and they're meaningfully relating to this crazy, crazy, absolutely mysterious, what the hell is all this world? At any rate, um, I would love to see more videos on encouraging people to gain strategies for accepting death and coming to terms with the meaning of life and death and having that be 
ferreted out from these, is there a God or is there not a God? Because I do think this is really lurking in the backdrop of so many of those discussions. Okay, just some thoughts. Thanks.